All right, there is something really important that we need to talk about in this video, and it's gonna save you a lot of pain and money in the stock market. And it's something I just realized, it just dawned on me, because I guess I'm a little slow, but I had to make this video right away because a lot of investors are gonna get decimated. This is serious stuff. And at the same time, it's a bit complicated and nuanced, which is why so many investors are gonna fall into this trap. It's happened so many times throughout history, and it's happening again right now. But by the end of this video, you're gonna be real glad that you're part of this valuable family and the greater macro ops community because we're all keeping an eye on this stuff and we can help each other avoid what's going to wreck 99% of investors. So let me explain what's going on. So if you've been following this channel, you know, I've been doing way more videos lately. And the reason I was doing this is because I was testing. I was trying to figure some things out that I had a hint about, but I wasn't really sure because I track YouTube finance a lot. It's a good sentiment gauge really. And I've seen some specific channels just blowing up. I'm talking about going from 10,000 views a day to 200,000 all within a month and I didn't exactly get what was going on I'm like all right this guy's fine seems like a nice guy but not much personality and God knows there's barely any research in this video when he's telling everyone to buy this stock so what is it exactly that's causing this channel to blow up and again these are multiple channels that I've seen this isn't a specific person I'm talking about so I thought okay I don't really understand what's going on but let me try to mimic some of this stuff and see what happens so I did some of those 10x 5x videos right buy this stock and oh 5x so those stupid clickbait titles now the video itself isn't stupid and the research isn't stupid because it comes straight from our research for Mac Ops, the same equity research we give to our clients managing billions of dollars. So that was all legit. And then I saw how popular Kathy Wood was, that she's a YouTube investing god nowadays. And I knew Kathy back when Real Vision first started. If you know Real Vision, it was like the Netflix of finance. So back in 2015, the group I was working with, our founder, he was good friends with Raul Paul. So we were one of the first people subscribed to Real Vision, and that's where I first saw Kathy. She was one of the first people on there doing interviews. I was like, okay, small fun, doing a lot of media. Interesting. And then fast forward to now, Oh, and she's the biggest, right? She's huge, at least among retail investors. But okay, I made a few videos covering Kathy Wood's investments because everyone is obsessed with her. Then I started really digging in these channels and reading the comments. And then it finally clicked what's going on here. And stick with me here. I know this is long winded, but it'll all make sense. And I should have realized this before, but what can I say? I guess I'm dense. And I'm also in a very particular bubble myself. And that's the macro ops bubble. So I'm surrounded by professional investors that of course are thinking differently from most people investing in the market. Market. Another benefit I have, which is also a drawback in some ways, is that I grew up learning this stuff about the stock market. My dad was a professional manager, so he'd take me to basketball practice and he'd be in the bleachers reading Market Wizards. He would lecture me for hours on the importance of risk control and how important money is and how hard the stock market is and why you need to always cut your losses. And this is when I'm like six years old, so I don't know what he's talking about. I'm just trying to go play PlayStation, but he keeps lecturing me. What I'm trying to say is that the environment that I've always been in has taught me to look at markets of very specific way, which is great for investing and building wealth long term. And it's great when I can share those same lessons with you guys. But it's not so great when I'm trying to understand what's going on in the retail space and why these certain channels are blowing up so much. So when it finally clicked, I'm like, oh, obviously the type of market environment we're in allows certain channels to pretty much pump penny stocks. Now, before I go any further, I'm not saying that these channels are malicious in any way or are trying to run pump and dump schemes. Not bad guys actually trying to help people. I'm sure. But what's happening is that they can recommend a stock and it literally will go up 30% overnight. Zero research done, no real in-depth analysis, just mentioning it on the channel and you will see that stock pop off. And it's basically like a YouTube pump. And then the daily content becomes, and these guys are even posting two videos a day, it's just reviewing their Robinhood portfolios and seeing how much the stock went up overnight. And then you have Kathy Wood in the middle of all of this, which I don't fully understand her fund structure because she is pretty big. She's pretty smart, but somehow she gets involved in these tiny penny stocks. And okay, they aren't penny stocks once she's done with them, but she will invest in them and then she'll get a huge boost because YouTube jumps on it. And it's not just YouTube, it's Reddit, it's all social media. And obviously she has picked up on the Kathy Wood effect and I'm sure she's benefiting greatly off of it. But we could take a whole nother video to analyze what she's doing. But what's happening is that someone on a YouTube channel will mention a stock and you'll have thousands, like I said, 200,000 views a day are what some of these channels are getting. You get all 
all these people buying immediately, whatever is mentioned. I'm talking no second thought. First of all, there is not much thought going into the stock from the person you know promoting it. And then the person digesting this information doesn't think about it an extra second, just presses that buy button. And here's the thing with my team, I'm used to doing you know in-depth research and sending this report out to our clients who then digest that research and see if those certain stocks fit into their process. Because the truth is, even if we find a bunch of great stocks, it's not great for each individual person because everyone has a different strategy. Even the stocks that I talk about on this channel, I'm not always invested in them. That doesn't mean they're not good stocks. It's just that my strategy is very, very specific. Same thing with Macarops, the stocks that we talk about, we might be invested in them, we might not be. Because like I always say, investing isn't about just picking the best stock. That's only 10% of the game. The other 90% is your process, your management process. So that's kind of a well-known thing in the audience that we usually give this research to. But it was making me feel uncomfortable when I'm making these videos and people are treating it the other way, where, oh, AK mentioned this stock, I'm buying it right away. Even though I try to say it as much as I can, hold on, don't just buy, look at your own strategy. Does it fit? This is idea generation, just like we provide for our clients. It doesn't matter though, no one's hearing it right now. And that's because of the market that we're in. Hear a stock, buy a stock, that's all it is. And the thing is, is that right now it is working. There's a reason these channels are getting 200,000 views a day. It's because these stocks are going up 30% overnight. And I'm over here getting more text messages than I've ever gotten from people who have never been involved in the market who are trying to get in. And they're not getting in in terms of buying Apple or something. They're going straight for these small stocks that are getting pumped because they see that a 50% return in two days and they're like, why wouldn't I do that? How do I get in on that? And it's just rampant, rampant retail speculation that's happening right now. It is getting nuts. And when I went into those channels and started reading the comments, I saw what type of people were really addicted to those channels. And these are desperate people. Not in a bad way, but depending on their life situation, situation, they only have $1,000 saved up their entire savings. And they're looking to flip that into $100,000 in the next month. And it's crazy because going from 1,000 to 100,000, 100 X return, anyone who understands markets knows how crazy that is. It's not impossible, but it's very difficult to do that safely. So I'm seeing people in these comments like divorce ladies with two kids trying to feed them, a guy who was on his last few bucks, just desperate people because of their situation. We all know what happened with COVID, right? A lot of people out of work and it's just scary. But what does this mean for you? Because you're already smart. You already watch our videos. You're part of the fallible community. But we still got to talk about this because it's getting more and more dangerous. And there's something very specific we all need to do. And like I said, the most dangerous part about all of this is that this crazy style of investing is actually working. And really, I should put investing in quotes because it's not really investing. And the thing you got to realize is that it's likely going to work for the foreseeable future. And those two things together, the fact that it's working now is going to continue to work for a while. That's extremely dangerous because what it's doing is is reinforcing these terrible investing habits in so many investors. There's a whole new generation that came in, right, with Robinhood, and a whole nother huge swath of people that came in at the March lows of 2020. So you could basically equate this to a person who sees a dollar at the base of a mountain. So he goes to that dollar and he picks it up. And then he sees a few yards ahead of him up the mountain is $2. Wow, even more money. Let me go walk up here and pick it up. And so on and so forth, he goes up the mountain with more and more money at each stage. And it's getting great, right? he's getting rich. He's like, this is so easy. This is amazing. I love mountain climbing. So he keeps walking and climbing or whatever you call it, picking up more and more money until before he realizes it, he's at the top. And this mountain is a cliff. Well, the next pile of money that he tried to pick up, well, it turns out there is nothing below his feet and he's crashing to the ground because it was a cliff and he didn't even realize it. So it just gets sweeter and sweeter up that mountain until you fall off it. And that's why 99% of people in the market lose who are trying to actively trade it. And it's why so many people lost so much money in the tech bubble in the late 90s and also in 2008. This always happens. This same thing happens over and over again. Any rampant euphoric bubble like the one we're getting into right now, it's so dangerous because of the positive feedback loop because the stupid things that you're doing work. So you think you should keep doing them and you do until it's too late and you fall off the cliff. I'll show you an example right here from my buddy Darren. He was uh, tweeting about this and Darren is a professional trader, extremely smart guy and he's a derivatives trader. So he's even smarter than your average smart trader. And you'll see Tyler is on this thread too, who's my co-founder at MacroOps. And I've been talking about this with him recently, but check out this tweet from this guy. He says, today I'm retiring
retiring from the corporate world at age 39, not selling any shares for the foreseeable future. And you'll see right here, he's an all in Tesla investor since 2013, put everything in it. And look at his account right now. He has almost 12 million. In one day, he made almost a million dollars on Tesla. He's retiring, he's done, he's won the game, or at least he thinks he has. If we go back to this tweet, Darren and Tyler were basically saying, hey man, maybe you should take some profits on those gains. But this guy's plan is not to do that. He said, I'm not selling any shares for the foreseeable future. So here's what's really tricky here. This guy is an all in investor since 2013. And the reason he has this much money is because he was all in. So when you tell someone like that, hey, maybe you should take profits, they look at you like, why would I do that? I never took profits before. And because I didn't take profits or manage any risk, this is why I have this much money. So this is the feedback loop that I'm talking about because he's right. If he was doing proper risk management, he would not have made that much money on Tesla. But realistically here, that mentality that he has is absolutely detrimental because Tesla is a one in a million shot. You try to do that same thing on any other stock, it wouldn't have worked. And this is the same thing that's happening to investors in these penny stocks that we're talking about before. They're like, why would I do anything different when overnight I'm getting 30, 50, 100% in a few days? What do I care? This is working. I'm going to keep doing it. But again, it's the cliff. Look at Tesla here. Look at this chart. It is absolutely incredible. This is one of the most amazing trends we've ever seen. Like in the history of markets, this is one of the great ones. And at the rate that Tesla is blowing up like this, they will hit a trillion dollars in market cap very soon. And then after that, two trillion, because why not? At this stage, tell me what analysis will help me differentiate between whether Tesla should be worth two trillion or one trillion, or even three trillion, four trillion, who cares? Because at these heights and with this much sentiment pushing something up, it's all just Fugazi. Because again, there's no realistic difference that we could comprehend in the numbers of Tesla, their earnings, whatever, that will differentiate between two trillion and one trillion. So what I'm trying to say is that the difference between them is all air. So in the same way Tesla can shoot to one trillion to four trillion, what's to stop it from going from four trillion back to 800 billion? It's all air at this point. And when things like that collapse, that's when people lose everything, especially all in investors like this, who for some reason thinks Tesla is going to go on forever, I guess. And you can see in a parabolic chart, it does not go on forever. This is like a blow off top looking thing. And don't get me wrong. I love Elon. I love Tesla. Huge fan. But this is just how markets work. And Elon knows that too. If I was Elon right now, I'd issue more shares, collect more capital and just milk it for what it is. And Elon is the only person I would tell to milk something like this because he actually is trying to get us to Mars and sustain human life, all those great things. But that's a different video. But you see what I'm saying here, this mentality that's building up in the market that people are learning. It's the same mentality that's going to lead them to get destroyed. It's the same mentality that killed people in the 90s. Well, it didn't kill them. It killed their accounts and their life savings. And it's just going to be terrible. And it's only going to get worse when people start using leverage, when people start taking a loan on their house just so they could pile it into Tesla because it's such an easy money win. This is all part of the euphoric thing that happens again and again. So again, though, what do we need to do? So what do we need to do to protect ourselves from this type of market and this mentality? Well, it goes back to risk management. It is so important now more than ever. And I'm not talking about immediately selling everything right now. In fact, you shouldn't do that at all because this parabolic market move that we're going to see is going to make all of us a ton of money. And you don't want to lose out on those huge gains. And that's why it's a bit tricky because you can't be a bear. None of us are bears at Fallible and Macrofs, but you got to play it the right way. You got to do the risk management things, meaning you're taking profits and cutting your losses. And here's the thing. It's not going to be fun to do this, especially in this market. Our fallible portfolio in 2020 was up 63%. Our macro ops portfolio was up 66%. And you know what retail people say to that? That's it. I can make that in a week. And it's a horrible, horrible mentality because they don't have a concept of risk adjusted returns. Yes. If you go all in on Tesla, you will beat everyone and you will continuously beat them until you finally get massacred yourself. So that's, what's going to make our job, you and me, so much harder because it's going to feel terrible having risk management when the people throwing caution to the wind are just making so much money and it's so tempting to do. So it'll feel bad up until that point where the market does turn and then you're going to feel really good because when people are seeing their accounts collapse 90%, you get to hold on to all your money. So in the sense, when you're doing good risk management, you're sacrificing a bit of upside to more importantly, protect your downside. Because what do we know? If you lose 50% of your account, it takes a hundred percent gain just to get back to break even versus if you lost 10% of your account, it only takes an 11% gain to get back to break even, which would you rather do? And when you are committed to solid risk management, that's where you sidestep the big crashes. That's where you could go up that mountain cliff, whatever terrible analogy I was making before, because I guess I don't know the difference between a cliff and a mountain, but you can climb up whatever that is, pick up the money and then turn around instead of walking over the cliff with everyone else. And when you avoid those crashes and you avoid those big down moves, you'll see your long-term returns absolutely 
crush everyone else. I'll show you an example with our fallible strategy right here. Our return since 2008, 2,250% versus the NASDAQ at only 649%. And is that because we were picking better stocks than the NASDAQ? Some of it, yeah. And not even picking better stocks than the NASDAQ, just the best stocks within the NASDAQ. But even more than that, the reason there's such a big difference in these returns, and you can see a visual representation here, the blue line is our strategy, the red line is the NASDAQ. See how much difference there is. And the reason why is because we cut off that downside. Whenever the market is taking a big dip, we sidestep it because we have that risk control in place. You can see right here in 2008 with this strategy lost 7.2%. The stock market after going down, what was it, over 55% in the NASDAQ, ended the year minus 31%. But that huge difference in managing your loss, it's a big part of the reason we're up so much more. And you can see the difference all these years, the blue line versus the red line, the blue line is us. And even in 2020, like I said, we were up 62% versus the market up what, 48%. And I'll tell you what, it is not easy to beat the index when the index is going straight up. Because in those times, it does look really tempting to just put all your money in. And I'm talking from an index perspective here, but same thing goes for Tesla, same thing goes for these penny stocks. But it's in those times where the market is volatile or taking a dip. That's when your active risk management really comes in handy. And that's where you greatly separate yourself from everyone else because your returns come out so much better. And that's the right way to do it. That's the way that you grow your wealth year after year in the stock market. That's how the professionals do it. And you do this at any scale, whether you have $1,000 or $100,000, or you're one of our clients with a billion dollars, you manage it with that same idea of risk management. It's going to be a little different at each level, but the same idea. Now, going forward in this market environment, we are going to be surrounded by so much FOMO because of all the rampant speculation and also just straight up taunting. Because even though these people aren't saying it, they're going to look at you like, oh, you're stupid. You took profits. Why? The stock went down and you sold it. Why? Why wouldn't you just buy more? It's going to turn around. All those stupid things that you know are stupid are the same things that they're going to taunt you with. So I'm going to do my best in all these videos to constantly remind you of risk management. I know I already do it, but I'm going to do it even more because it just dawned on me how crazy this environment is getting and how many people, especially on YouTube, which is where I'm producing these videos, are just getting wild, just buying without thinking. So I'm going to do my best to just be the opposite of all that noise and keep reminding you of risk management. Helps me too because I need the reminder. It is tempting. It is very tempting to succumb to these strategies because the money looks so nice, but it will not look nice when the thing turns and the thing always turns. The market always turns, I promise. So stay strong. Just hold on to that risk management because like I said, this thing is going to go on for the foreseeable future. And by that, I mean at least a few more years. And that's what our research at MacroOps is saying. There's going to be a lot of volatility, but the bull is strong still. And that's the thing about bubbles. You don't know how long they can last, which is why I said just don't go bearish all of a sudden because it could blow up much farther than you think. And in our case, in these markets right now, there has been a big major change that we've never seen before. It's a fundamental structural change in the market that's going to let this thing run much further than it could have in the past. And if you want to learn what I'm talking about, which you should, because it's really important, click this video right here. We explain it. You'll see exactly what's happening and why it's setting up for an even larger disaster in the future. Something this crazy to the upside is going to lead to a very crazy downside. So again, click this video right here where we explain it and I will see you there.